Hey guys, welcome to the uh, configuration and installation of a PDP 550. Here I have Chris with me. He's the inside sales guy. Uh, I'm the Saga Deshpande. I'm the product manager for the for this product. So today we'll be going over uh, some of the features that we have in the 550, doing a live demonstration. Also, we'll be going over how would you install and configure uh, a new brand new PDP 550. Awesome. Right. So uh, first thing is when you get your uh, firmware, right? So you go to support page, you go to go support center, you go to downloads page over here. You scroll down all the way to the PTP 550 section. You got to go to beta. And then if you click this download, you're going to get the, the image file that you can use. So the same image can be used for the force 300 as well as the PTP 550. Uh, and this this image is mainly for now just used for FCC, IC, and RAW. We will be releasing a new firmware in the next couple of days, which will also uh, include HC as part of this one. All right, let's go back to the uh, configuration. Over here we have uh, two 550s. One is the 550 Master, and then one is the 550 Slave. For now, let's see how would you upgrade a regular 550 to the beta firmware. All right, so this is the IP address that we have just logged into. So you go to Tools, uh, you go to Browse. This is the image that we just downloaded, and uh, once we click it and s open it, um, it's gonna uh, this thing, and then you gotta upgrade and then reboot that radio. We've already done it; it already has the BRC13, but this is the process that you upgrade. So you need to upgrade the master as well as the slave mm -hmm. uh, for this to work. Okay. Right. And with the with the new AC chips in these products, we're gonna experience fewer reboots per when you change a configuration. Right. That's right. So we have to only reboot when you change something on the radio. But if you're changing something on superficial, uh, it, it should be uh, we don't need to reboot uh, the radio. All right. So let's see what how would you install a 20 megahertz link and then on one channel. So the PTP 550, as you know, has three radios built into it. The reason we can say that if you have three RFs. RF1, RF2, RF3 marked over here. So RF1 and RF2 configure to the two uplink downlink ratio, like you can transmit mm -hmm. and receive on that. RF3 is a separate dedicated chipset that we have for online spectrum analyzer. Oh, that's really cool. So uh, these colors, do these colors indicate anything about the link status and link quality? Right. So, so they do. So we have a quick start guide. I won't go into too much detail. It kind of takes a bit of time. Uh, so every 550 kit comes with a kickstart guide and each one of them uh, we have a color coded uh, symbol that shows what each one uh, represents. So the power, I'll just go through quickly, the power is basically if the, uh, the device is powered on or not, sync is if it's syncing up through the other radio. Ethernet uh, is should be green which means there is an Ethernet connection. Not necessarily that's always the case because you can have a, a remote login uh, as part of that as well. SFP LED blinks up if you have the SFP connected, that mm -hmm. makes sense. RF1, RF2 depending on what configuration you have and RF3 is used for the monitoring part of it. Got it. Okay, right. very cool. Uh, okay, so let's go to the installation part. So over here we have the uh, master uh, and then we have the SSID that we need to name. So this is already configured. Let's go step by step on what you need to do. So over here we need to write the device name. It could be whatever. Uh, in this case we have mentioned in this one. The radio can, has to be master in this case. We have the SSID of security. We're going to use open for now, uh, but you can also have WPA2 and have appreciate key, which is the same on the slave side. On the radio, the country is configured as United States. If you have the 550 in US, it's it's going to be defaulted to 550, but you have a different country you can select, which whichever country you want by, uh, there'll be a scroll bar, you can select mm -hmm. whichever country you want. Uh, uplink downlink ratio, you, you have three options right now. We're going to plan to add more in the future. Uh, max range is the distance that it can go. The, the 550 can go up to 124 miles long distance using different dishes. Uh, but for now, we have just set it to a default three. Uh, this has channel bonding, but for now, the master has disabled. So in this case, the master sets what the uh, slave configuration is going to be. So in this case, if I want to choose a 20 megahertz on a band, I can choose. And the, and the slave, as I'm going to show, has to uh, scan in that band for it to catch up. Okay, so just because you change the the center frequency, the link won't go down. The the, the slave will will actually kind of catch up catch on up. the, on the right. other radio, right? And then it'll oh, that's actually really cool, right? So we don't need to change on both sides, right? Uh, we need to just select. Let's say for now I'm going to choose fifty two hundred. I haven't changed it from whatever it is, but I change the twenty megahertz link to this one, and I click next. Uh, we have a static IP address, and then we click finish. Now you might be wondering, how do I know which is the best channel that I can log on to, right? Because That's a great question. 
So for that, we have to go to tools and we've got to go to spectrum analyzer. So this is the third chipset that's present on the master as well as the slave. So you can see them as, as a different, but for now we let's focus in on the master. So if you click start for full availability, you can see the entire band, including the phone line. Uh, so this radio supports 51, 52, 54 and 58 radios. So <laughs> over here you can see since the link is already set up, you see a lot of power uh, transmission in this one. And then there's a NIC 74 across the board uh, for the other channels. Uh, so this kind of shows uh, how you see on the real world deployment part of it as well. <coughs> we also have a monitoring tool. So over here you can see how much traffic has been sent out. Uh, you can always reset. Um, you can say how many, what is, when was the last reset done. You can see packets. You can see session. You can also see really interestingly is what MCS rates, what packets are going. So this is really useful if in the last 24 hours you see a sudden drop and then it comes back up, you can kind of monitor it um, in this way. And then it shows the percentage okay. of the time the radio spent in each modulation mode, correct? That's right. So it says either number of packets as you can see over mm -hmm. here, or you can see the percentage um, as, as part of that as well. Uh, next, we're going to go through the throughput chart. So this basically, since it has one radio, you can, uh, the uplink and down, we are, we are not sending any traffic in. Um, so it looks something similar to this one. This is really slow, but we can, once we start pumping in data, it, it's going to uh, increase. Uh, but this is a really good chart, just kind of keep an eye on, keep tracking. So you can either do seconds, minutes, or even hours if you want to uh, see how, how, how the system is performing. So over here, so this is really important. So if you want to see if your link is set up, so the place you need to go is monitor and wireless. And uh, over here, if you see, you can see one radio is registered as the slave. So if you have one radio, one selected, if there's only one tab, it means. So, so when you take advantage of the channel bonding and you're actually using two radios and you're making one link out of that, right. you'll see two radio right. interfaces right. on this monitor wireless tab? That's right. And you're going to see in the next few minutes how we can configure it that way. <coughs> so also if you go to uh, uh, networks over here uh, in the security part of it, so this is our WPA security open as well as this one, you can always have the firewall <coughs> enabled. So if I go to firewall, I can add stuff. So if I want to, uh, let's say if I want to add, let's, let's put in a name over here start ABC and what action I want to do do I want to allow and so let's say I accept right and I do an interface on the uh, LAN and then what type of data do I want so you can kind of configure each one of them to have a different file you can set each one what packets are allowed and what packets are not allowed depending on your network mm -hmm. configuration on both layer 2 and layer 3 that's right um, so I think we already talked about uh, this one. So this is the uh, network monitoring part of it. So this gives you the IP address, which is again also shown in the uh, static side of it. So I want to just talk a little bit of system logs. So here, if you enable it, you can kind of continuously track and download uh, every day or two days and kind of track what, what other stuff is going on. So if, if it reboots and all that, so you can keep an eye on the uh, system messages. This is really useful for debugging or if yeah. you are stuck with any issue, you can always contact support and provide these logs. All right, so now, <clears throat> so let, let's let's do one thing, right? So let's so right now we have one link, which is on the five two zero zero, which operates on a twenty meg channel, right? So now what we want to do is let's say this capacity is enough for you for now. Let's say two months, three months, six months down the road, you want to double your capacity. You don't need to buy another video. All you need to do is click a button, and then you get twice the capacity. So we're gonna set up channel bonding right now. Right. Awesome. So. Channel bonding for now, I'm going to show it how I would set up on the slave side. So let me just go back to the slave. Right, so we have the status page over here. So the link wireless link is up, but I can always double check uh, by going to the monitor and wireless to see if one entry is present over here. If the entry radio one is present, it means the link is up, right? Uh, for now, let's go to the installation. Let's go to start setup. Over here, this is the device name. I'm going to select slave for this one because we are in the slave tab. Next over here, this is interesting. So right now, channel bonding on the slave is disabled as it is in the master. That's why it's able to communicate. So the channel bonding setting should be the same on both. You can't have one channel bonding enabled and one disabled. Uh, okay. You just make, make sure that both are aligned on the same one. 
So in this case, I have one disabled. This is a previous setting of one channel. And I've chosen to scan 80 megahertz, 40 megahertz, as well as 20 megahertz. If you don't, if you unselect 20 megahertz, and in your master, if you have a 20 megahertz, it's not gonna scan for 20 megahertz channel. Right. right? So you need to make sure, ideally you would want to keep everything. It takes a little bit of time to scan through everything and it's pretty quick generally, but it makes sense because even if you uh, choose a different, on the spot, if you choose a different band, you don't need to worry if my, oh, is, is my slave available on that band or not. I, I personally prefer to select all and then just choose all of them. Right. So for now, let's enable channel bonding. So I'm going to click enable so that automatically doubles it up. That's a lot of channels, man. That's a lot of channels. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. So for now, okay. So what I'm doing is I'm allowing all channels on channel A, right? Mm -hmm. On radio one, all channels, all, channels. all configurations. On channel B, all channels, all for configurations. So on my master, it's going to search everything for mm -hmm. two channels, right? So this I do next. I don't change the static IP, it remains the same. Mm -hmm. I click the setup, finish, and it says okay. And it's gonna apply the changes. In that, we have the bubble, notification bubble, that also says, oh, okay, our changes are uh, uh, saved. We're gonna clear this message, wait for a couple of minutes to happen. Till then, we're gonna switch back to the master and configure the master to two channels, right? So we go to installation, we go to start setup over here. Instead of channel disabled, we're going to click one button and now you have two radios. That's it. <coughs> so we have radio one and radio two. Radio one is configured as a 20 megahertz 5200. Ra Over here, I can select whatever I want. I, because the slave has all the bands selected, right. pre-selected, I don't need to worry about is this going to be available or not. I'm just going to choose one of them. And then click next and then finish. All right. And this is also applying the changes. So now I think the radios would have rebooted. So let's try to log in. Oh, so now we see two bands. So oh radio, yeah. Yes, yeah, so we have radio one, which is operating on 20 meg and radio two, which is operating on 80 meg. Right, so let's go check. Another way to check it, uh, you go to the online spectrum analyzer to see what other stuff is happening. So the blue line, which you can see here, this is a 20 meg, which is your channel, and this is the mm -hmm. 80 meg, that's again your channel. So you're gonna see them uh, fill up <coughs> uh, in a, maybe like 30 seconds. Um, so here you can see. I really like what we did with this new spectrum analyzer. It, right. It's pretty intuitive and really colorful, and I think it helps you guys visualize the RF space. Right, and also you can zoom in, right? So if you click yeah. here, uh, you can also zoom in just by clicking the button, and if you click this, you're gonna zoom out. Uh, so let's go back to the installation. So another way to monitor this is if you go to wireless, now you see two radios linked up instead of the one radio from before, right? So here you have the 5200 20 meg 7, and then this is the 5770 80 meg 7 dBm RTX power. So now uh, let's say you want to monitor some of the throughput stuff, right? So you have, if you want to monitor just radio 1, just click this. If you want to monitor just radio 2, click this. And if you want to combine the two automatically, you're going to use this. That's really nice. Right, so it gives you an aggregate data. Right. Of, uh, and you can also see the combined uplink and downlink. So we have some downlink data flowing, but it's really small, uh, but you can have both of them. Right, so even if the performance wise, if we see, if you go down, so we have uh, the packets combined. So we have the radio one, MCS, what mm -hmm. is the rate? And then we have the radio two, radio one and radio two configuration and how the package is. So you can see like there was a few more packets on radio one because we configured that before and now radio two is zero because there's not that many packets. Uh, but uh, if you keep running traffic, you, you should be able mm -hmm. to find more. So now we have one 20 megahertz wide channel and one 80 megahertz wide channel. I mean, right. I'm assuming you're gonna see more packets over the 80 megahertz one right. and that's gonna right. be normal. Right, right. Uh, it's, it's for you to choose, right? Depending mm -hmm. on your network, your network conditions, uh, you can choose however you want it to be. Right. So next thing, uh, I'm thinking what else uh, we have to show. So if you go to, <coughs> so one really cool thing is your transmit power is different, right? So you can mm -hmm. here you can choose uh, seven 
10, whatever, depend because each band is slightly different based on the EIRP limit. And to match that, you can have a transmit power which can be configured, uh, or you can set it to a specific number so you don't have to match according to the radio. You can, so you can have the 5A, which is blasting at a higher TX power than a 5.2, which needs to lower its TX power. So that's really advantageous. So here also you can select. So if I am uh, the master, let's say I want to bump it up, right? So Okay, I have a 20 meg, now I wanna push it to 40 meg. I click this, I save, and I reboot. That's it, because my slave is already mm -hmm. configured to scan for everything. Yeah, radio, radio one in the slave will scan all channels in 20, 40, and 80 megahertz right. wide blocks right. until the, you know, the master comes back online and makes that connection. Right, that's, that's absolutely right. So the, the slave doesn't need to be configured because mm -hmm. it's already pre-configured that way. Um, so, that's a, so I won't save the configuration, but uh, it, it's a really easy way to uh, do it. Uh, the last one that I want to showcase <coughs> is over here, uh, we're going to have CN master support. Uh, we don't have it in this beta firmware load, but within a month or two months, we're going to have the uh, firmware which will support CN master, so you can already integrate it into your CN master uh, environment. And will that be in the uh, final release candidate software? Yes, for sure. It will okay. be there. We're already working on it, but it's not part of this beta firmware release. It's going to be part of the next, uh, in the next few weeks. Okay, very cool. Um, and now these two guys are operating in different channels. They use independent modulation modes, correct? That's right. So if one is operating on the MCS9, as you can see, mm -hmm. the other doesn't need to operate at the same, it can mix and match. Gotcha. So that's really advantageous over there. So if you if one channel gets hit with interference, the other channel doesn't get affected. It, it operates on its own. Which uh, is helpful in five gig unlicensed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. which is really unstable. Uh, over here, just like a last thing to wrap up, you have different kind of admin accounts. Uh, I use the administrator admin admin, but you can also have uh, different installers, read only, home user account, just to kind of uh, give different level permissions to e each one mm -hmm. of the types of users. So, that's so that, that is a good thing to note to either disable or change the default passwords on a specifically the installer account. Right, right. So you wouldn't be susceptible to right. for somebody else to log in if they knew that. Right. And also what you can do for debugging, as you mentioned, is like you can select, and if you go to system info and the configuration system, and if you select any of these notices, in your log files, you're gonna start saving more information. Mm -hmm. So if you wanna specifically debug uh, anything, you can always click this and then give it to the support guys who can help you configure or, or see if you have an issue on the link side of it, right? Uh, so this is the high level upgrade on the PDP 550 configuring on a single channel as well as moving to dual channel. Uh, so what are your th final thoughts on this one? I, I'm very excited for this platform to be in, this, in the uh, channel and deployed on towers. I think uh, you guys are going to like this product a lot. Um, it's very flexible at the, and actually pushes a lot of data too. All right. Thank you guys for following. Uh, please uh, go to our support.cambium network page for more information.